Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Devin here with Devin's Dog Days again, and today we are going over Jack's groom. If you missed it, I already did part one of this video. It was covering everything to do with his prep, bath, and blowout. So if you wanna get in on that, make sure you hop over and check that video out first, and then come back to finish watching the grooming video. So let's get started. So to get things started, I'm gonna go ahead and use my Artero reactor. It has a four in one blade and I'm going to use an attachment comb over the top of it. This is actually one of the wall attachment combs that goes with their clippers, but it actually is compatible with the Artero reactor. And we're gonna be coming out with our own attachment combs for this soon, so stay tuned for that. I'm gonna be using a one comb on his body as well as his front and his rear. So right now this is going to be what we call blocking in. I have it set to a 30. And I'm just gonna start right in the middle of his back. I like to leave a little in the front and I'm just gonna go right ahead and get started clipping right into his body. Attachment combs are such a huge time saver and there's so many different options out there. Um, I definitely grew up in the day and age of using the attachment combs on my different uh, cordless clippers, so I'm a little spoiled this way. There are amazing extra wide blades and attachment combs out there that work wonders and make grooming so much faster. On the back of the leg, from the bend of the knee, I'm gonna go up in reverse. The reason I do this is to make sure that I keep this back area clean and keep it a little bit shorter than what's on the body. This helps shorten the dog up overall and profile, and it also helps prevent leaving any extra hair back here that he doesn't need that poo or something can get stuck into. And then I'm just gonna skim off over the legs to knock some of this hair off to save time so I don't have to use my scissors on that. I also like to skim right down the front to set that leg up and under the body, just taking just right off the front of that leg. And then I'm gonna trim that to connect into the feet once I trim those. I like to leave a little bit of a chest. So I'm just gonna come back and neaten that up with my shears. and then in reverse underneath. Again, taking these areas for sanitary purposes shorter. It's not by much, but it makes a big difference. Now, because of the style that I decided to go with on his head, it's almost, I feel like you I was inspired by the Bichon and then into the Portuguese water dog with a more narrow snout, but then also Asian fusion where I kind of made it a little bit cute and round. So it's basically a hybrid of those three things is how I ended up with the head that I have right now. And to help elongate his neck and to really get this nice and tight so we can get that cute little mustache, I'm gonna use a four attachment comb and clip from the sides of the neck up under the jaw and skim off the whole muzzle. This is gonna make it stay nice and tight so that way I can really accentuate that mustache on top of his nose. Coming out in a diamond shape similar to what you would do on a Bichon and then skimming down. The next step in my grooming process is gonna be setting the feet. I'm gonna be giving him some nice little tight round feet. And then once I do that, I'm gonna be able to connect my clipper work to my feet, which is gonna give me my legs. Down. Down the back feet. Parallel 
the side. Take left on your Alrighty, next step, I'm gonna be using my Alp 16s to go ahead and scissor these legs into place and finish off the body in any areas that I already clippered. I'm gonna go ahead and finish putting this tail into place, trim the back of the tail. You could either, you could easily do this with a seven blade, just going right up the back of this tail. I like it nice and tight, but I'm just gonna go ahead and scissor it since I already have them in my hands. Taking it nice and tight on the back of the tail and leaving a little bit more hair in the front is going to help shorten up his back and also make it not look like his tail is hanging out out past his butt. I personally really love this terrier tail. Um, I know some people like the palms where you can shave just at the bottom and do a nice cute little brown palm tail. Um, there's so many different things that you can do to style your pet, your clients. It, you can have so much fun with the poodle. And this is also a great trim to use towards a doodle as well. Setting that rear nice. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take it even tighter with my shoes now. Just helping to really block him in and make him look nice and short and square. get any extra hair back here that I don't need for him. All right, so we'll go ahead and start with the front. I'm gonna trim in my chest now. Get this even a little bit shorter. Smooth it out. And now coming off of the shoulder that I use the clipper on, I'm gonna be connecting right down into that foot. Just a nice straight line. Make sure your dog is standing nicely for this. There we go. And then for the front of the leg, same thing. I'm gonna be going right from where I clippered down into that toe. Always remember you're working on a three dimensional critter. So take a step back, look, look at all angles, look from everywhere to make sure that hair is not sticking out of place. Now I'm gonna go ahead and trim the inside of his front leg. And the way that I do that is I'm just gonna match the line on the inside here to the one that I've already created on the outside. Just go right up into the body. Not perfect yet but I'm not worried about that just yet you get worried about perfection the first go around you're gonna get stuck in those little details just go ahead and get your body all set up and get everything in place and then you can worry about your finish work after I feel like this is a, this has made me a much faster groomer I always like to do my grooms in three parts I do the block in and then I connect everything and then I worry about my finish work now to kind of bring our body all together, I'm going to go ahead and do those legs. So what I like to do for my back legs is I like to lift the leg into its natural motion. Um, this would be when he's walking. And I like to follow my line from the back and go right up into the loin. Uh, rule of thumb for the loin is two thirds, one thirds. 
course, when you're working in a grooming salon, it can depend on if the dog gets tangled in those areas. I know for me, a lot of times I have to take pet clients a little bit shorter in at the front of the top of this leg, but for Jack, I can leave him really nice and flush because he's mine and I maintain him every week. I give him a bath every week or at least every other week. So he is always in very good condition. I like to also pick up the foot and use this to just tip off the back because I really like to leave hair there for flare. And now I'll go down and finish moving it up. It's all about balance, making sure that the front is balanced with the back, each side of the dog is balanced. And then for the inside of the leg, I like to lift the leg up, almost kind of like you're peeing on a fire hydrant. And I go ahead and take off everything that's sticking out from where his foot is, aligning it with the opposite side of the leg. And I'll do this right up into the loin, getting rid of any extra hairs that are sticking out of place in here. Oh boy. All right, that's pretty good. We got that leg set and we can move on to the front leg. Front leg is a lot easier. Again, thinking of the dog being in a natural state of motion. I'm going to go ahead and follow from where I set the foot. Go right up into the body. And then to just double check, go on the inside. Make sure there's no armpit hair sticking out. No crazy harsh edges anywhere where they shouldn't be. Are you falling asleep, bud? I'm showering. Mm -hmm. Are you falling asleep? He had his feet shaved previously, so you can kind of see they're still growing in a little bit, but we are almost there. So now that I have my body and my legs set the way that I want them to, I'm gonna go ahead and start working on my head and then we're gonna connect the head into the body. So the first thing that I do when I'm working on this head in the style that I have it is I do what's normally done on a Bichon where I cut an inverted V right in from the corner of the eye to right to that nose, an equilateral triangle. So you don't go too far in and it's just clean up the hair in front of the eyes and really help give them this cute expression. Oh boy. You can also do that with thinning shears if the dog doesn't tolerate the clipper very well there. There's definitely different options. All right, so to really master this head, you have to first start with the bottom jaw, which I've already pretty much cut pretty short with my clippers. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift this ear up and pull it forward to the front of the head. And I'm gonna slide my shears on the dog until it hooks right behind his jaw. And I'm gonna move just a little bit further back from that. On Bichon's, you do it right from where that the shear would stop. On Jack here, he doesn't have the same structure to his head, so we have to go ahead and help shape that for him. And the other side. Lifting the ear and combing everything out. And then connecting where you just trimmed into the bottom of your jaw. Not too much to do since I already clippered. Now, to get these really nice round sides, you're gonna to wanna to pull the ear back, comb all of this forward, and push the ear forward to really 
set that right and nice in there. For the sides of the head, I'm gonna start by trimming my ears really nice and tight to the leather. So I can feel his leather is right there. I've got basically just a quarter of an inch on the end of those ears. So I'm just gonna take that right off. Come all of this forward and trim anything that's sticking out past that ear now. It always helps to push your ears forward. That's gonna put them into the position that they'll be in when they perk their ears up, either at you or at their mom or dad. So that's gonna really help make sure that you get the expression that you're going for. Comb it all forward, drop the ear. down. You can see there's still even hair coming out. All right, and now to get this really nice soft expression on his face, I'm going to start by combing all of this back and then combing just what's above the eyes. I'm going to trim from corner of the eye to corner of the eye and go just about a quarter of an inch behind the corner of the eye to really open up that expression. And then, bit by bit, I'm gonna hold his head down at an angle and comb the hair forward. And I'm gonna just trim what sticks out past that first cut. And that's gonna help me really build out that nice, full, round head. Shake it all loose. And that gives him that really nice plush little front. I'd taken it a little too short the last time I groomed him, so this is finally growing back in. I'm very happy about that. And now another little trick that I like to do to make his muzzle look super cute and adorable is I take my clippers and just shave with a 40 or a 30 the front of that lip. Again, this is something you do on your Bichons. Usually for them it helps with pigmentation, but I like it because it kind of gets rid of that little extra bit of hair on the front so it helps shorten up his muzzle a little. All right, and now to make sure that we get everything in its head in the right shape, comb everything back. And I'm gonna trim what's sticking out past the back of the head from the line that I said earlier. To the other side, same thing. The reason I do this is so that after this groom, none of this comes out to stick out of place, but instead just stays under to help support that adorable, soft and fluffy expression. Just gonna connect right over the head. Look at you. Oh, I love this cut on you. I'm not taking too much off today because I have been growing him out into this from a German trim. So we're finally getting this really beautiful big round head now. Rounding off the ears a little bit around the back. <laughs> God, I love you. <laughs> all right, and I'm gonna go ahead and finish this muzzle. Combing all of that up. Finally getting some more hair here. I am thrilled. I'll go ahead and use my uh, Artero Slalom Curvies. 
him right on the edges. I'm trying to now take his muzzle a little bit tighter on the outside edges to make it really cute and small. And I blend, I come in a little and just make a little bit of an indent to really help stand that muzzle out from the rest of the face. So it gives it that little bit of separation to really pop the muzzle forward. So cute. All right, and now we're gonna connect the head into the body. So for this, I have a really awesome trick that saves a lot of time in the grooming salon. So you can accomplish these really pretty, fun, flashy trims, but not take 500 years on them. And so what you do is once you have your top line already set, which we did earlier when we clipped him, and we've got the head done, we're gonna comb all of this hair out and back from the head. And where we come to the top of our head, we're gonna connect it right down into our body. Ta-da! And now you can go ahead and just match it in and blend it into the rest of the body. I like to turn the head and trim off anything that is sticking out of place from the body up into the line I just created. Not pinching behind the ears, but just cleaning it up. You don't want to pinch back there, or else you're gonna just look like you have a big hole in the back of your head. And on the other side, turn the head. Trim what sticks out of place. Trimming from behind the dog is a great perspective. You can really see if there's anything sticking out from the back of that head. You can see if there's something that you're missing from a different angle. Definitely always recommend that. All right. And so now we have the complete shape of the body set in. So my next step is gonna be just going back over finish work. I really love my Alp 43s with this. It's gonna erase any harsh lines, it's gonna smooth it out, and it's gonna have a beautiful, plush, soft, just fluffy finish. And here is the part where you can really go over your room with a fine tooth comb. Make sure nothing's out of place. Double check your work. Soften up any harsh lines. Oh, and then of course, finish your tail. I'm doing kind of what I'd say is a carrot tail, thin at the tip, thicker at the base, so that way it balances and blends into the body. Again, like I said, terrier tails are wonderful and easy. I love a good terrier tail. This guy sticking out there.
This is always one of my favorite places to really look at after the groom is right into that loin, into the leg. Make sure that I've got a really nice line. Nothing sticks out of place. Another really great trick is pull your leg all the way forward, comb out everything in between the le front legs, and push your leg back and look, you can see everything that's sticking out past this leg area. Trim that all off. It's just gonna look like a tumor, and then you've got your legs set right in place underneath. You're so handsome. Yeah, you are. You know, you go bush. We're all done. But are we ever really done? Oh boy. And there you have it. Thank you so much for watching my first ever grooming tutorial video and make sure that you like, subscribe, and share and stay tuned for all of the future awesome grooming tutorial videos that I have planned. Thank you.